Why do you think players like McDavid play so well so consistently? Well, obviously he has world-class skill. That's not a debate. But what if there's a bit more to this story? What if there's a mental skill that he has that the best players have that allow them to play so much more consistently and play at such a high level consistently? So I could be wrong on this, but this is what I believe is the reason that separates the best players from the guys who are just about there, but they just don't play at that top level consistently. And if you're somebody who knows they have the ability, you're doing the work, and you know there's just that little extra that's missing, we're going to dig into that. And after this session, I hope that you have the full ability to unlock your flow state. And so that's really what I've been researching. And I've been looking into this a lot lately is how does a flow state work? And it's really the state that you see when a player is totally present, totally focused, and everything is just working for them. It's a skill that I think is the most important out of all the skills you could learn as a hockey player. And the reason for this is because if you can be present and totally in a flow state at all times in a game, you have the ability to perform at an elite level. And if you don't think that's true, think about any time you've had a great game before. Now, realize that any time in that game when you were playing at your best, you were in some form of flow. The reason you have to be in flow in order to play well is because in order to be making high quality decisions and making decisions and trusting your instincts, you have to be able to completely zone in on the game and let go of every other distraction. When you're in this state, you feel this unshakable confidence. You stop questioning yourself. You stop overthinking and you actually just trust your instincts. You stop questioning yourself. You feel light on your feet and you feel secure in your future. It's that moment where you feel like the game is actually just an art. It is a magical experience almost. It's, it feels as if you don't exist anymore and you are one with whatever you're doing. And the famous author Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, he has the hardest name in the world to say, He's a flow researcher, and he wrote the book on flow. He describes it as a state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. The experience is so enjoyable that people continue to do it, even at great cost, for the sheer sake of doing it. He also said, the best moments in our lives are not the passive, receptive, relaxing ones. The best moments usually occur in a person's body or mind when it's stretched to their limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. And then there's George Mumford. He's the guy who worked with Michael Jordan and the Bulls, helped Michael Jordan master his mental game, helped him to be able to figure out how to be a great leader. He worked with Kobe Bryant, with Shaq. He just came in and worked with the Oilers and helped them to almost win a Stanley Cup this year. And you could see that mental game really coming out in games four, five, and six of the playoffs. So it's safe to say that George Mumford knows what he's talking about, and he wrote the book Mindful Athlete. And the way he describes flow is you're flooded with consciousness and you're fully and wholly concentrated on the here and now. This is the experience every athlete has when he or she is fully in the zone. Sometimes we call this being on fire. All distractions are burned away. This is pure performance at its best. And now, I don't know about you, but I super deeply relate to this. The best moments in my hockey career were the moments when I was able to be in this very deep, pure performance flow state. And I know it sounds a little bit woo-woo, it sounds a little bit strange and kind of mystical, but it's not this strange conceptual thing. It, this is a real thing that scientists are consistently studying. Now we're not gonna get into the scientific literature with this, but the point of this is to start to introduce you and understand how to actually get into flow. If you wanna go do that research, just go to Google Scholar and search flow or flow state and you'll start to discover there's tons of literature out there and it's all starting to point towards this ideal state that the best people in all fields are getting into. So let's talk about like what exactly flow is and comparing it to presence and kind of connecting the dots there. So flow and presence are very similar, but they're slightly differently and they kind of work on a spectrum of states. And that's how I describe them, how I break them down in anything I teach. So in the mental software levels, there are six mental software levels that I currently teach. And the first core level is attention. So it's really where you direct your attention at any given moment. So the first level of attention or the first piece of the level of attention is focus. So focus is directing your attention towards a specific thing, a specific task or a goal. When you learn how to direct your focus, that's the first key component to level one. And remember, this is my approach to teaching it. There's lots of ways to learn this stuff. There's lots of ways to learn how to get into flow state, but this is the way I break it down fundamentally. So number two, you have presence. So presence is when you're not thinking about the past or the future, 
and you're fully present to what is going on in this moment. Now, focus is just being able to focus on something. This is this can be anything going on in the moment. Now, what happens when you get into presence is presence is being able to say, I'm, I'm not thinking about the past, I'm not thinking about the future, or focus is being able to like narrow your attention at something. And presence is like narrowing your attention when it comes to time and it comes to thinking. Then we have awareness. This is understanding the perception of the things around you. This is your surrounding environment. So the ability to not only focus on one specific thing or narrow your attention down, but also to be able to open up your awareness at the same time to allow sensory information to come in. And when you're thinking about this from a game perspective, the ability to get into a flow is not just being dead center focused on the puck or focused on just scoring goals. It's being focused on everything that's going on, which is really what I call awareness. Right? It's directing your attention and opening your attention up so you can be aware of everything that's going on. And then if you do, do these three things right, you essentially get flow because you have a clear goal and a clear thing you're trying to accomplish, but then you let your success mechanism or your subconscious mind and your instincts take over. And flow is this moment where you connect so deeply to what's happening that everything becomes effortless, light, and confidence just radiates from you because you're not trying to do anything. You just are it. You're just doing it with complete attention and complete focus and trusting whatever software you have in your mind. Now, I want you to imagine what would your career be like if you spent every game up to this point, so all of your career, if you had to spent it in the flow state. I guarantee you'd be further further ahead than where you are now. Because being in that flow means you're tapping into all the resources you have and you're able to discover these moments of creativity and what I call connecting with your true self. And when I say connecting with your true self, it means you have these moments where something happens on the ice, you do something and you're just like, I, I genuinely don't know how I did that. I never thought of it. I didn't plan it and it just appears. And if you've done this before, you know what I'm talking about. There's something to this that almost feels like, it does feel like magic or like mystical. And the thing is, I don't think it's magic or mystical. It's your ability to be able to just tap into the present moment so well that all the training, all the abilities you have in your mind, there's just this creativity that just pops out. There's just this blend of different ideas coming together and you just do something and it just magically kind of happens. And so the question becomes, well, how do we get into this state more and more consistently? Because that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to consistently be in the flow state, consistently be performing at a high level. And that's what I'm trying to figure out when it comes to looking at like a McDavid or a McKinnon or a Kucherov. When they have these times when they're playing so consistently over the course of a season, for sure, there's a bunch of different elements. And I don't just think it's mental. But I think that the ability to tap into flow and being able to basically let go of everything else, this this one skill of being so present, so confident, so there, that it is it allows them to do things that you could never expect. Like McDavid, I think, taps into this flow state every game at least a few times. And it's just, this is what we pay for. People pay to see people do it. And that's why I want to help you to get to that point. And you're trying to trying to figure that out, right? You're trying to figure out, like, how do I get into it? Well, the first thing is to understand how you're not getting into it. Like, let's talk about what's stopping you. So here's the three things that I notice, the three kind of core things that get in the way of people getting into flow or flow blockers, as some people like to call them. And these are what I've noticed. There's a lot of different concepts. There's a lot of different opinions on this. This is just the things that I notice when I work with players. So the first thing is mental distractions. So this is when your brain gets pulled towards something else instead of what you're doing. And I think that when it comes to using your phone super consistently, like being on your phone on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, I think getting used to this really quick gratification and really quick like movement of attention, I believe that that has a lot to do with why we get distracted so easily now. And generally speaking, everybody has difficulty like focusing. People always have, but I think it makes it harder to get into this state when you're trained to pay attention to something for like a few seconds and then switch and then switch and then switch. So my recommendation for this is just become aware, first of all, because I'm just going to talk about the issue. I'm not going to talk about solving it. Solving it, we'll talk about next. But fundamentally, when your brain gets distracted, you're in a bad place. And George Mumford, the way he breaks this down is, so the real key to high performance and tapping into the flow is the ability to direct and channel the strengths and skills in the present moment. So these are the things you have, and it starts in your mind. The flip side of this equation is also true. 
no matter how strong or skillful you might be, your mind can also impede the talent from being expressed. And it often does so in insidious ways if you don't take care of it. And so that's why it's so important to realize that if your brain's constantly getting distracted when you're in a game, you're going to get distracted too. You're not going to be as effective at being able to dial in. Now, the second piece to this is an overemphasis on winning. So I see so many players who their whole emphasis every time they step into a game is like, I have to win. And they put so much pressure on themselves. They stress themselves out and they end up lowering their performance because they're so focused on winning. And they're also trying to be so perfect. And so if you focus too much on winning or try too hard to be spectacular, which is something most people tend to do, you actually take yourself away from doing the things you need to do to get the results you want. And that includes experiencing flow, right? So it's starting to probably click a little bit here that your brain can be a tool if, you're, if you allow yourself to tap into the flow and tap into your abilities, but it can interfere and get in the way if you're not, if you haven't done this, if you haven't learned how to get out of your own way. Now, the third one, which is kind of obvious and it's connected to what we just talked about with the pieces of mental software, but it really comes down to a lack of present moment awareness. So this is simply just not paying attention to what's actually happening right now. So really flow is your ability to stay in the present moment. It's your very particular state of mind and it's the ability to stay present and it fosters that zone experience. So being able to let yourself fall into the present and stop thinking about the past, stop worrying about what's going to happen next, it allows you to tap in. Now for the next piece, what I want to really dig into is, well, what are the three ways to consistently get into flow? So those are the three things that typically get in the way. Now, if you're trying to consistently tap into it, you want to make sure you don't do those things. Now, let's talk about how to get them, like how to actually do the stuff instead of not doing the stuff. Hope that is kind of clicking and connecting there. And so first of all, if you are wondering about like, do you have any tools? Do you have any systems? Do you have stuff you can help me with this? Yes, I do. So we have the Mental Mastery Hockey Academy. And so this is a free group I put together where you can go and hang out with a whole bunch of great players. But ultimately what you're going to get is all the, you're going to have free courses where you can actually learn all of the components of the mental game and really build your mental software foundations. We also have some additional courses like the actual meditation course where you're going to learn how to develop the ability to focus, to be present, to be able to actually direct your awareness and open your awareness up and then get into flow. So you can obviously check that out. The link should be below this or it'll be available to just if you go to courseandsurls.com or not courseandsurls.com, go to identityshifthockey.com. You can also check it out there. Um, so that's the, that's the plug for today. Now, the one core thing you want to think about when it comes to getting into the flow state is realizing we are wired to get into flow. We actually are meant to. If you think about it from a biological standpoint, our brain wants to to get into flow because that's what would have allowed us to hunt better. It would have allowed us to, to build things more effectively. It's going to be naturally better for us because when you perform better, generally you get what you want, right? And that's a better survival concept. It's hard to say that in more of a like a scientific way, but just think about it based on a basic level that the ability to be able to get into a present state and to be able to be 100% focused and light and more effective probably would have been beneficial evolutionarily. Now, that's just my theory. I think that aligns and makes sense. And so if anybody could teach you this like 100% and there was some perfect method, well, everybody would know it already. That person would be a billionaire and there'd be no point to have mental coaches. But the case is not everybody knows how to do it. It's a little more complicated than just saying I want to be in the state in the flow state. And so when it comes down to it, what I really want you to think about is these three core things to get into the flow. I'll stop dragging this out. So first of all, it's meditation, which I'll break down a little bit more. It's letting go of perfection and letting go of the need to win. And it's letting the software run. So the easiest path to learning how to tap into flow is starting with meditation because it's starting to learn how to direct your focus into something. So just take a minute now and try it. Just as we're talking right now, just take a breath, pay attention to your breath, bring your attention there, just relax. And as you do bring your attention to the breath, you just notice right away, well, I can just become more present right now. Okay, now take your attention and direct it into your body, right? As you're taking a few breaths, as you're just sitting with the body, notice how the body feels as one. If you can't do it right now, well, that's why you want to do this practice. Just like learning how to skate or stick handle or whatever it is, like these are skills you can develop. And by developing the mental software skills, it allows you to be able to step into any game and, and be able to focus and get into flow faster and more effectively and more consistently. 
then you can play more consistently. And we have over 15 different techniques and a whole bunch of different like breakdowns and, and concepts in that meditation course I was just talking about. So feel free to go check it out as well. But George Mumford, the way he breaks this down is the more you practice mindfulness, which essentially is directing your focus and being aware of what's going on, the more readily you set yourself up to experience conscious flow. Having a mindfulness practice is like watering your garden. It's the only way to actually make things grow. It's a practice meditation consistently, and you'll notice that you're able to create the fertile ground so that you can get into flow more consistently. It doesn't guarantee it, but if we can increase the likelihood that you get into flow every single game, and most games you do, and we keep moving that up and up and up, well, then we're going to give you a chance to play better and better and better because you're doing all the work in all the other areas. We want to give you the ability to tap into that with your mind. Now, the next piece is letting go of trying to be perfect. Because again, when you're trying to be perfect, when you're trying to force yourself to win or get a certain amount of points, you put so much pressure on yourself that you end up getting in your head, your ego gets in the way, it slows you down and you don't perform. And so right now, I want you to accept that the best players in the world, they still miss 80% or more of the time. If they shoot 100 shots, they miss at least 80 of them. I don't even know if anybody in the NHL this year had a 20% scoring rate. It's very, very unlikely. And if you want to be a great player, you're going to make mistakes. That's just how it works when you play higher and higher levels and when you expose yourself to any challenges. And the best teams in the world, the best players, they don't win every game. They don't win every shift. They don't win every period. And so acknowledging, hey, I might not win every single game. I might not win every shift but I'm going to still show up and perform as best as I can and put in all the inputs I can, it becomes very clear that that allows you to relax into the moment. So fundamentally, just stop being so stressed out about trying to win all the time. Stop being so stressed out about trying to be perfect because neither one of those are going to happen every single time for the rest of your career. Your job is to show up and see what you can do and try to win every game. Or another way to look at it is to perform, right? Because the, the famous kind of Yoda saying is like, try, do or do not, there is no try. And when you really think about that, it's I act with full intention or I don't. So you can kind of think of don't try, just show up and perform. And whatever occurs, you allow that to happen. And you trust that the process will carry itself out over time and you will get better. But you cannot actually dictate if every single thing goes perfectly. You have to let go of that. And mind you, I tell this to every one of my professional my deep, my high-end junior guys. I'm telling this to every single guy. These are concepts that every player must learn. This is a inherent truth of life. And it may sound like one of these things where you just kind of gloss over it, but you're listening to this for a reason. So actually take that and sit with that. I recommend just take like five, 10 minutes after this, meditate on, do I really have control over everything? And can I let go of trying to be perfect and trying to win every single thing? Not that you don't want to win everything, not that you have the drive. You want to have the drive to win, but you accept that this idea of pressure doesn't exist. It's just created in your mind. Instead, it's giving everything you have to perform, putting yourself in difficult situations and seeing what you can do. And again, not like you do or do not. And the key is to do. Right. So I hope that helps. Now, the third component is letting the software run. And this is what I really like to say when you do get into a flow is you just let the programming and the software you have in your mind, the abilities you have, just let them run. Just let them do their thing. Stop trying to interfere. Stop trying to control them. Stop trying to be perfect. Just let them run. And so pure performance is ultimately a leap of faith. Do your due diligence. Wow. I really screwed up that word. I'll try that again. Do your due diligence your right effort, and then take that leap. Release control of the moment. There we go. Look, we got through that. And so you want to understand what I mean is think of your brain like a laptop for a second. And you have different programs on that laptop. And I bet you've clicked on an app before and it starts to maybe, it, it doesn't pop up right away. And so then you press it, you know, 50 more times and you just click, 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 and nothing's happening. Well, when you do this, what you're doing is you're interfering with the software. So if there's a mistake in the software, you don't want to just override it and, and make it like kind of glitch out. If you were, if your software, like if your computer was running and you could like go in there and like mess around with it, like you wouldn't do that. You don't mess with the running software. You just let it run. Trust that it's going to work. And if it doesn't, then you run a diagnostic, you fix it, 
and then you come back and see what happens. This is what coders do when they change the code in something. So it's your job to get out of the way, let the software run, and then figure out where the bugs are in the system, edit the bugs, which in this case are the mistakes you make or the plays you don't want to make. You learn about this through watching film. You don't try to fix it during the game. You learn from it. You reflect on it. That's why we have full actual game tracking sheets and things we use in our identity shift systems so that you can fix this stuff so that you do actually have ways to fix it and it doesn't force you to be like stressed out and worried about what's happening in the game you just make like adjustments in the game quick quick adjustments and then you make major software changes and updates after the games and this allows you over the course of a season to improve faster the players who get better faster than everybody else just make faster iterations. And if you want to be a guy who is in like mid-season form within the first five games, have a mental preparation system. This is going to make a huge difference for you. Again, that's why I recommend just go and do the, the mental academy that we put together. Because if you start to master your mental game now, it's going to make a huge difference. So try that out. And now there's one quick nuance I want to make but with, with flow in general is you have micro flow and you have macro flow. So micro flow is a little bit different than macro and they both are connected and you want to think of it more like a spectrum of flow where you have like the lowest form of flow and the highest form and your goal is to move into it. So micro flow is when you have those little moments where you just do something and you're like, whoa, I didn't know what I just did there. You make a crazy move. You make this cool deke you never thought you would make. That's micro flow. And that's you trusting your software in that moment. And that kind of just happens randomly. But then there's macro flow, which happens when you fully allow the software to run and you start playing full games and you start to have these extended experiences of just being in an optimal state. You want to work towards being able to get into macro flow. That's why it's so important to actually do the work to actually improve your mental game and improve your mental software so you can play better. Because if you really think about it, a successful season for you is going to be taking all the hard work that you did in season and in the off season and then asking yourself how many times can i be in macro flow and have full games where i'm just in this present dialed in state and i'm trusting my software the more times you can do that the more games you're going to have optimal games and you'll get more points you're going to have more success it's just a it's a, at the end of the day if you put yourself in that state consistently if you spend every game in that state, you're going to have tons of great games. And so again, I recommend go join that academy. It's it's a free group. You can go join it. It's really simple. And the real benefit of this is you're going to have an opportunity to get ahead of where other people are at. Whether it's practices, games, training, and just life in general, the more often you can be in a great mental state and you can allow yourself to be truly tapped into that flow, the better everything about your career and life is going to be. It's not really a negotiable thing. And so go do that. Start to learn these skills. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you crush it this week. And I will talk to you guys next week.